Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. Our lead story this morning is regarding Joe Biden and his top generals contradicting Joe Biden about how many troops to leave in Afghanistan and whether we should pull out of the region or not. This one comes from our friends over at the Daily Wire. If you're not already a member, please go over and become a subscriber today. They title it, Biden lied, President blasted after top generals directly contradict what Biden said about Afghanistan. President Joe Biden faced backlash on Tuesday after top U.S. military leaders testifying in front of the Senate Armed Services Committee directly contradicted what Biden told the American public during an interview over the summer amidst the U.S.'s withdrawal from Afghanistan. If you recall, there was an interview with ABC News' George Stephanopoulos and Joe Biden. And George Stephanopoulos questioned Joe Biden on this number of troops regarding how many should be left in and if he had a meeting with his generals. Stephanopoulos said this. Troops but in. your top military advisors warned against withdrawing on this timeline. They wanted you to keep about 2,500 troops. No, they didn't. It was split. That, that wasn't true. That wasn't true. They didn't tell you that they wanted troops to stay? No, not at, not in terms of whether we were going to get out in a time frame, all troops. They didn't argue against that. So no one, no one told, your military advisors did not tell you, no, we should just keep 2,500 troops. It's been a stable situation for the last several years. We can do that. We can continue to do that. No, no one said that to me that I can recall. Look, George, the reason why it's been stable for a year is because the last president said, we're leaving. And here's the deal I want to make with you, Taliban. We're agreeing to leave if you agree not to attack us between now and the time we leave on May the 1st. Less than two months after I was elected to office, I was sworn in, all of a sudden, I have a May 1 deadline. So here's the issue. Joe Biden saying that he doesn't recall. We all know Joe Biden is not there cognitively. Your overused hair dryer has more brain power than Joe Biden does cognitively. But all jokes aside is I can actually believe that our president doesn't recall. I can actually believe that he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember his own name. He fights with his teleprompter all the time. He has his freaking questions with the press already pre-looked at, pre-selected. He already has the reporters pre-selected. Everything is vetted for him. He doesn't remember his wife's name. He doesn't remember his general's names. He thought he was running for senator when he was running for president of the United States during the election. He also called his vice president, President Harris. So there's all sorts of stuff going on with Joe Biden where I can believe the fact that he doesn't recall ever having a meeting. He doesn't ever recall having a conversation. He doesn't recall any damn thing. Now here's also the problem is that he would know, or you would like to think he could know that the American public knows that he's not cognitively all there and he can use that whole oh i don't remember or oh i you know i might have had a conversation but I don't recall as a scapegoat for being inept and not doing his job efficiently and correctly as commander-in-chief so that's a problem well biden faced this widespread criticism comparing those remarks that we just read with the statements the generals gave today the statements which appeared to directly contradict what biden said now who was giving these contradiction statements well as defense secretary lloyd austin who's the chairman of the joint chiefs of staff general mark milley and head of the u.s general command general kenneth mckenzie or excuse me the head of the u.s central command general kenneth mckenzie gave their testimony under oath in front of the senate armed services committee and this is what that looked like but i'd ask general mckenzie did you agree to the recommendation that uh, uh, General Miller uh, had two weeks ago? Senator, uh, again, I won't, I won't share my personal recommendation to the president, but I will give you my honest opinion, and my honest opinion and view shaped my recommendation. I recommended that we maintain 2,500 troops in Afghanistan. And I also recommended earlier in the fall of 2020 that we maintain 4,500 at that time. Those are my personal views. I also have a view that the withdrawal of those forces would lead inevitably to the collapse of the Afghan military forces and eventually the Afghan government. Yes, so I understand that. And uh, General Milley, I assume you agree with that in terms of the recommendation of 2,500? What I said in my opening statement and the memoranda that I wrote back in the fall of 2020 remained consistent, and I do agree with that. This committee is unsure as to whether or not General Miller's uh, recommendation ever got to the president. Um, you know, obviously, there are conversations with the president, yeah, but I would like to ask, even though uh, General McKenzie, I think you've all made this statement, did you talk to the president about General Miller's uh, recommendation? So I was present when that discussion uh, occurred, mm -hmm. and I'm confident that the president heard all the recommendations and listened to them very thoughtfully. Now, as you could see, there is a massive contradiction between the president of the United States and his top generals. Now, here's the thing. The only person that's not in the loop was Joe Biden. 
How is that possible? How is it all these military generals are all on the same page here regarding how many troops to leave in Afghanistan? What would happen with Afghanistan if we pulled out and Joe Biden, the commander in chief, the leader of the whole shebang was left out of the loop. Does anybody really believe that? Does anybody really believe that Joe Biden, somebody that's been a politician his entire life, knows how to run things or should know how to run things, was vice president. You're going to tell me that he didn't sit down and have a meeting with his generals. He didn't think that they'd have a little powwow and discuss how this whole thing could be ran. Now, there is a possibility that it's true. There is a possibility that he didn't do any of that. And he was just so inept that he just decided to pull out with no plan. And it sounds like that is what happened here, which is truly mind boggling. Now, is it shocking? No, because we see Joe Biden's cognitive state. So it isn't that shocking, but it is pretty unbelievable. The fact that he is going out there and saying, he doesn't recall, I don't remember when his own generals here are freaking throwing him under the bus by saying that, look, we told the guy we should have left 2,500 troops. Not only that is that we knew this would happen much quicker than one to three years that was originally given by other generals. Look at this. McKenzie said that the recommendation that he gave Biden was shaped by his honest opinion of the situation in Afghanistan, which was the U.S. needed to maintain 2,500 troops in Afghanistan and that pulling out those forces would leave inevitably to the collapse of the Afghan military forces and eventually the Afghan government. Milley later said that he agreed with that assessment. So you have multiple generals here that were on the same page about leaving 2,500 troops. And we recall, if you recall in the episode that we did about this whole debacle happening, I said, we've known this for 10 plus years. Me as an American citizen, I'm not even a general. I was never even in the military. I'm not even in the whole, the know-how of everything. We all heard if what would happen if we would leave, this would have happened. So that's why in, the, in that episode weeks ago, I said, look, this isn't a shock. We all knew this would have happened. Is it a shock that the president decided to do this? Yeah, in this way, absolutely. Because again, he was vice president. He was a senator for a long time. You think the guy would know how to be commander in chief, but hey, you know what? I guess we were wrong with that one. Well, it's not just that. Millie McKenzie said and made the remarks during the following exchange with Senator Jim uh, Inofi, I don't even know how you pronounce the guy's name is Republican from Oklahoma and Inofi's question about general Austin Miller, the commander of the U S forces in Afghanistan from 2018 through July of this year is in a reference to the reports that Miller said this strongly dissented with the Intel assessment that Afghanistan would fall to the Taliban between one to three years saying that he thought it would be much, much faster. So that contradicts what Joe Biden said. Oh, well, I received just these reports about, uh, you know, one to three years. How could anybody have ever thought that this would fall any quicker? Well, Joe, your own general, Austin Miller, the commander of the U.S. forces thought so. So he's the one that strongly dissented with the intel assessment with Afghanistan. And he said that it would fall much, much faster. So there is either a massive problem with Joe Biden being left out of the loop in his generals. And Joe Biden's not communicating with anybody, just making decisions just willy nilly or there's other stuff that needs to come out here and people need to be fired and resigned now millie is somebody that i think should be resigning because he is part of the involvement in all this somebody needs to be fired here it's not that you can just have this whole debacle and nobody gets fired it is astonishing that what you have at the u.s mexico border what you have domestically going on what you also have foreign wise as far as afghanistan you have joe biden killing seven children with a bomb and you're telling me after all this stuff nobody's going to resign I mean, there's literally senators like Senator uh, Tom Cotton or Tim Cotton, one of them saying and calling Milley saying, dude, you need to resign. General Milley, I can only conclude that your advice about staying in Afghanistan was rejected. I'm shocked to learn that your advice wasn't sought until August 25th on staying past the August 31 deadline. I, I understand that you're the principal military advisor, that you advise, you don't decide, the president decides. But if all this is true, General Milley, why haven't you resigned? Senator, as a senior military officer, um, resigning is a really serious thing. It's a political act if I'm resigning in protest. My job is to provide advice. My statutory responsibility is to provide legal advice or best military advice to the president. And that's my legal requirement. That's what the law is. Um, the president doesn't have to agree with that advice. He doesn't have to make those decisions uh, just because we're generals. And it would be an incredible act of political defiance for a commissioned officer to just resign because my advice is not taken. This country doesn't want generals figuring out what orders we are going to accept and do or not. That's not our job. The principle of civilian control of the military is absolute. It's critical to this republic. In addition to that, 
just from a personal standpoint, you know, my, my dad didn't get a choice to resign at Iwo Jima. And those kids that are at Abbey Gate, they don't get a choice to resign. And I'm not going to turn my back on them. Uh, I, I'm not going to resign. They can't resign, so I'm not going to resign. There's no way. Uh, if the orders are illegal, we're in a different place. But if the orders are legal from civilian authority, I intend to carry them out. Your handling for a lot of the time now has just been garbage in line with Joe Biden garbage. He needs to go. There needs to be somebody fired. Somebody needs to resign. Austin later said that Biden heard this input. So Biden saying that he didn't recall and didn't remember could be true, but his own generals are saying, look, we spoke to the guy. We either had a meeting or a sidebar conversation. Something happened where this information was given to Joe Biden and he still went with his own gut feeling. He still, cause it can't be his head, right? You can't say like, oh, you know, I really thought about it. And, uh, you know, just kind of came to the decision that we're just going to pull out because it doesn't make sense. There was no plan. He was shooting from the hip. A lot of people had to die especially 13 U.S. soldiers got blown up because the guy was a knucklehead and just wanted to pull out of Afghanistan when his own general said it wasn't a good idea. Everybody knew this wasn't a good idea. Everybody knew for 10 plus years this wasn't going to be a good idea. We can look at prior history with the Russians and everybody else regarding Afghanistan. This wasn't going to be a good idea. We all know what would have happened, but when you have a senile old man as president of the United States that doesn't know what the hell is going on, you have a country that's being freaking destroyed over there by terrorists. Women are being beaten in the streets. Women are being gang raped. People are being beheaded. You have Christians that aren't showing up anymore. Nobody knows what's going on with them. They're all being murdered. People are trying, private citizens are trying to go over there and pull people out. This whole debacle was created by Joe Biden. What's going on at the U.S.-Mexico border was created by Joe Biden. Now, the only thing that maybe wasn't created by Joe Biden is this whole coronavirus thing. But I mean, he was so set up to have this coronavirus thing be successful it's mind boggling, but he's still keeping businesses shut down in places. He's not freeing up the economy, right? He's still putting in mask mandates. He's making the federal employees be vaccinated, right? While Congress passes their own thing about saying, well, we're not going to be mandatory vaccinated, but all of you have to be. So everything that's going on with Joe Biden, he created himself. He was literally handed over an easy job from President Trump. And all he had to do was sip on his milk in a sippy cup and take naps and everything would have been fine. You literally just had to open up the government, allow people to get vaccinated on who wanted to be vaccinated. You don't have to force it upon anybody. And dude would just be rolling. His approval rating be through the roof because of how he was set up. He just needed to ride on Donald Trump's coattails, but he can't do that. So astonishing stuff here. And we're not even going to talk about the deficit. If you want to see yesterday's episode, I highly recommend if you want to hear a 30 minute rant of me bitching and raving about the deficit because my number one issue aside from illegal immigration, I highly recommend you look at the episode folks because I got a lot of steam to get off my shoulders and I also prayed for the president. So if you want to join us in prayer, that is the episode to do it. But there you have it, folks. Biden lied. President Trump blasted after top generals directly contradict what Biden said about Afghanistan. Shocking stuff, isn't it, folks? Of course, I'm being facetious here. Thank you so much for always supporting the show. Please make sure you like and subscribe to this video. Share it on social media. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, all the social media apps. We are there, folks. I would love for you to join me on those apps. And with that being said, I will see you later here on The Bald Brad Show.